and push me against near something, he's, he's going to push me against the wall with some force. The one thing about having it landed against the wall, whatever damage was done, whatever injury, whatever windy, it's happened. You can't undo that, but you don't want to give them ch the chance for it to happen again. The nice thing about being against the wall, your turn. <laughs> the nice thing about being against the wall is that when I go forward, everything I do now goes away from me. There isn't an ounce of my energy, my, my, my structure or anything wasted. So when I hit, or I gouge, or I turn, or I rip, or whatever I do, all of it is going forwards. The moment I move away from the wall, <coughs> first of all, he can push me back. Or secondly, if I'm, if I'm in fresh air, I'm pushing, but you'll see my body moving backwards a little bit through the resistance. As soon as I'm against the wall, you know what? I'm hurt. Okay, put your big fist. Push. Push. <laughs> it's, it's, it's uncomfortable. Move out of the way. And I can use it against him. So being being against the wall, once I'm in the corner and, and, and in, if I can, as long as I survive the initial impact, and, and do you know what? You're in a martial art in the world that can teach you to do that one. Maybe you, should, maybe you jump off a few rooms about ten times a day. Maybe you become immune or dead. But one of them won't work well. But, but if I survive the smack against the wall, and I can't do much about telling you whether you will or you won't, once you're here, everything goes forwards. It's like talking about ground fighting. People go, oh, you know, there's no ground fighting in Ring Chan. I was like, well, why not? Well, I've never seen it, you know. Sun Yat Tao stood up, Chung Q stood up, Yu Ji. I said, well, that's because the Chinese never fall over. They went, really? I went, no. You know. <laughs> 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 They're all bottom heavy, and they like, they swing back up on their own accord, you know, it's obvious. <laughs> Everything that you do vertically, you can do horizontally. Line your backs. Line your backs. You do it. Show you got to watch the machine somewhere. Oh, that's good. Punch upwards. What the hell does it punch harder? Punch, punch, punch. What's the difference between that and doing it vertically? Should we try to get on top of you commonly? Why don't you do that? Cover your centre line. Cover your centre line. Cover your centre line. Think about town punch. They're coming in. Contact on the lead hand. Deflect it. Contact the lead hand. Deflect it. What's the difference? Makes no odds. So if somebody comes in, somebody's here, trying to punch you. Okay, there's your centre line. They're coming again, there's your centre line. It's coming again, there's your centre line. You're going to do it exactly the same. The thing is, you can't fall over that. I'm the one that's vulnerable. No, I can't. I'm not so vulnerable. I come into here, he covers it, does a lap down. Boom, I'm already up front, aren't I? So who's more at risk? If I'm the ring turn fighter, then I'm coming down the centre line. Because I'm coming down the centre line, come down the centre line, come down the centre line, come down the centre line. I use the centre line to my advantage. Because that's what I trained for. If he's trained for that and I haven't, and I'm trying to come in here, he'll be using his side by his advantage. He can't fall over. If he can't fall over, he doesn't need his legs to support him, so he can be using knees, he can be using kicks, he can be doing all sorts of good stuff. Rinchon works on the floor if you chose to, because what you're learning in your forms and your drills and your techniques is not the application, you're using the concept of what you do. And the concept of the center line works, whether I'm kneeling down trying to have a cover. Fighting down because somebody's falling over and they don't deserve a bit of mercy. Whether I'm on, on my back trying to defend myself or I'm on my top finishing them off. It doesn't make any damn difference. And it can't make any difference. You know? But just because you haven't learned to lie on your back and punch doesn't mean that you can't lie on your back and punch. Because the mechanic is the same. So the idea of Wing Chun is not to try and teach you. Because if, if we try to teach you an answer for every scenario, you'd have to live to about 350. You're not going to be able to cover it all. So what we teach you is the basics. Okay? How many letters in the alphabet, the English alphabet? Three, six. You said that quite impressed with you. It's actually your memory from last time, or if you know it. <coughs> 26 letters, okay? How many words in the, in the Oxford English dictionary? A lot. A lot. You might be right, I don't know. Okay? But I guarantee you, if you went and got a, a dictionary that was, I don't know, 40 or 50 years old, and you looked up iPad or iPhone or broadband or Bluetooth or Alexa or whatever you find, but they're not in the dictionary. But when some new technology, some new methodologies came out, they didn't add a few letters on the end, which is what the martial art world is trying to do, add a few techniques in. We'll do, we'll do some ground fight, oh, we'll do some kickboxing, oh, we'll do some MMA. Oh, we'll just, yeah, we'll do MMA and we'll wear life rooms put our groin in a man's face. I <laughs> don't think so. Anyway, it's, it's, you know, they add stuff in. We don't need to, we just recombine what we've got. Your martial art, your Wing Chun is like a Swiss army knife. Lots of bits in there. Each one can be used for a different tool. 
but you don't understand them, you don't know how to use them. The old saying, if all you hold in your hand is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Computer's broken, fixed. not working, fixed. Car's broken, fixed. Mrs. is, no, forget that. But you know what I mean, she's got the hammer. Um, everything, you're gonna hit, if you, all you know is how to use a hammer, you're gonna hit everything, no matter what, whether it's, you know, but you know how to use your tool set properly, and that's all Ring Chun is teaching you to do. Sudden Tao, Chunky and Beauty are a tool set. Your alphabet <coughs> is your Sudden Tao. Your abilities combine those, those letters together to make very simple words, is Chunky. Your ability to have a conversation and string them together better is Chisa. The ability to debate and put a point across is street self defense. Okay? View G is the, is the apologies. It's the bit you get, it's the get out of clause free. It's the bit that recovers the problem. So, so Sunim Tau is your tool set and basics. Chum Q combines those with stepping and moving and drilling to make these simple little physical words. Okay? But View G is there because no matter how good you are, it'll go wrong. So there's, a, so there's a recovery techniques built into it. That's how the system strings together. Um, the wooden dummy is just like, it's like, that, it's like that person in the corner that never sleeps 24 7 that you can train on. Never hits back, never subs, never, never, never tries to cry about it. Doesn't get bruised and trains forever, and that's brilliant. Not the be all and end all. So again, grabs. Last one then. Rear, gra rear bear hug. <coughs> I've got to say, when I, uh, whenever I watch it, every assessment is the funniest thing on the planet. And there's two funny things. First of all, one man's going like, I'm going to grab it like that. So I'm not going to rub my nuts against your ass now. <laughs> you'll get that wrong now, please. You know, or the one that goes, is that a dummy now? Da, da, da. So when somebody grabs. They always grab here. That's <laughs> free. How is that which don't you think? I hope that is done. Don't you restrain me? Look, I'm not restrained, am I? So well, how I can hit him. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Okay? How is that restraining me? That's not why I pull the grab. You know? Going above my elbows doesn't, doesn't stop me. Going below my elbows, that's more of a problem for me. Okay, because now I'm restrained. Okay, so let's say this is I'm walking down the park and Hilda behind comes up and attacks me like this. Okay? Ow, ow, no, please, hurt. Ow, ow, don't hurt me. Now, unless he's got a heat seeking penis with five fingers <coughs> that can manipulate out of his trousers, I'm really pretty safe at the moment. Okay? So, how's it going to hurt me? Where's the threat? Oh, no. Yeah, there's the threat. <laughs> the third person. Should be grabs you, it's usually because another person coming in. So, why does everybody spend all their time in assessment doing this? <laughs> You know, do you like holding the testicles? Maybe you do, I don't know. But the restraint is about stopping them defending against the other person. So you deal with the other person first. Only then you want to worry about it. Just for a second. Now do it. Now pin here. Better. Okay, so now I'm really, a little bit more controlled. So all this stuff where people go, oh yes, in the second section of the first one, you pull your arm, you're not going to get out that way. You just turn your hips, look, look. <laughs> I know, I'm after it. <laughs> <laughs> see is people trying to do all these fancy fancy things. What I'd like to see in the assessment is, is almost an acknowledgement that could be a third person. Even get a part to come and help you. I've got a tackle on behind and have one in front. Deal with the problem first, you know, if he comes flying in, let him. You, you know, think, think about what may happen, not what a classroom does with you. What does a classroom do for you? <coughs> Make sure your arms are pinned. If they're not pinned, it's not real, is it? And then, just turn your head. All of a sudden, he's, he's wriggling around. You know, he's not. He's not gonna, he's not gonna wanna keep hold for no good reason. I remember, I remember a, a, just a guy. Back your side. Oh, you've got camera, so I can't do you. I remember a guy come up to me, big lad, uh, for no reason. I mean, you know, I was out with a friend, mind me a bit. The next bit, this kid's like this, and he's like, he's trying to taste my breakfast. For Christ's sake, back off. He's in my face, and he's like, give it some. And uh, I did the only thing I could do. Difficult, pick up his testicles. Oh, you <laughs> That's the space I wanted, thank you very much. <laughs> you know? Now, had you just stood there and smiled, I'd be really more concerned. But first we had, you know, you just do what you've got to do. And my hands were down here, and so, yeah, we just tested the water, and mm -hmm. moved off. And I was happy. <laughs> he wasn't as happy as I was, I was happy that he'd gone. It's not that I found him. Um, but, you know, <coughs> you do what you've got to do. In the street, it's not clear cut. So you're not learning application. So that wrist grab, Sorry, that, that rear grab here, don't grab him here. Because his arms are free, it's not worth doing. Okay? I want to grab, and don't grab it, don't let his arms on the side, 
and grab him here, it's too easy to get his arms out. Grab them there. That's where you want to be grabbing. So when he now moves, it all tries to get out of it. Because <laughs> 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 he knows he's going to tie it, but. <laughs> <laughs> so I want you to play, I want you to go out, and I also don't want you to train indoors all the time. Because it's a nice flat floor, it's beautifully lit. Go outside in the, on the grass when it's slippy and see how your technique then works. So when I see all these things, I go, I better do that. There they go, boom. <laughs> flat on their arse in the mud because that's what can happen. Train on gravel, train on unequal ground, train when the light's not that great, train with multiple people, train little situations. We, I do a lot of scenario training. Okay? Scenario training maybe. At night, work at the paint happy, isn't it? So scenario training would be for me to take ten of you down the far end, have a little huddle, tell you to wait, take three of you, take you somewhere around here and have a chat with the three of you. And the scenario would be, as far as I'm concerned, between this wall and the end of that pavement, imagine there's another wall, so it's like a corridor, you can't get out of it. And you, you three are... Um, had a few drinks, you're out having a bit of a laugh, having a giggle, and you see this kid coming towards you, and you're going to verbally harass him. You're not going to attack him, you're going to verbally harass him. What are you going to do? How are you going to behave? How are you going to, be, how are you going to walk? Do it? And then I go down that end, and I pick one person. And I go, this is your scenario. You go off the bus, you're late, you know you're going to get a bollocking, so you take the shortcut. You're halfway up, and you see these three people in front of you. You don't have the option to go back. How are you going to get past them? And you get, and honestly, you get people to go, <laughs> oh, 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 what are you doing? Well, yeah, they might attack me. Yeah, they might be innocent people. They don't mind their own goddamn business. But you've now just waken them up to the fact that you're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> people walk down alleys like that all the time, obviously. I want to see, I want to see their body language. I want to see their confidence. You know, so then you get more. Well, that's not going to stop a fight, is it? That's going to provoke it. So the, the, your body language, your posture, the way you approach. You know, if you've got, what are you? What are you? You've got three people here, there, and you want to get past them. You know, you don't go through here. Always go this way. Sorry, mate. That's easy. You always go this side. Because they've got to get through in there. Well, there's nothing in them. Yeah, you see people go, oh, I'm just kidding. I'm on my own. Yeah. You've provoked them. You know? And if you were the young lady, and I thought I didn't worry you, you're the only one. Okay? You don't then have the lady here. Just so as a threat, how can I protect her? So the first place I want you is here. I just make sure that as we walk, sorry mate, excuse me. Where are you going? Where are you going? Where do you think you're going? Oh, no, I'm not with them. Oh, where are you, where are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you just got to use a bit of common sense to turn what is a light-hearted, silly little classroom game into something that might actually trigger a response. <coughs> and have a play. And the thing you don't know is she was going to kick your ass. I wasn't, she's texting me. <laughs> <laughs> But scenario training is really good, and then what I'll do is I'll take, I'll, I'll have the three up here, and I'll brief them on, I want to try and nick their watch. Nothing else, I'll try and take the watch off you. So when they walk towards you, that's not nice what time is that? Well, okay, can I look at it a sec? Why not? Why not? What's them to you? I'm not, what, what are we trying to say about me? What are you trying to say? No, 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 I'm not, can't, don't, can't, you just accuse me of it almost to be the thief. No. Fucking hell, man. You know what I mean? And you can, and you, and there's no answer. There's no right way to do it. Because I might have gone, give me a watch. Can I have your watch? Okay. I might have done it. Can I have a watch? Can I have your fucking watch? Uh, depends on what that is. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? There's a lot. You can play scenarios, and you should play scenarios. You know? There's an easy way of doing it. See this door here? Here's something you can play with. This is a, a fire exit. This is a, an exit to a restaurant. You just walk, to, walk to, about to walk out, you think, oh, I better pay the bill because they're going to get pissed off. You go in, back inside, your kids, your niece, your nephew, your wife, your girlfriend, both if you live really dangerously, they've gone out <laughs> to the car, right? When you walk out to go to the car, you see her being, or them being attacked by two people. You go out, two people come out, you have to deal with the problem, but you're in a doorway. How are you going to deal with it? How are you going to protect them? What are, you going to, what are you going to do? What are your reactions? What's your body language? What's your vocals? You know? How do you do I don't it? even and ask me. I don't this is what I do all the time in my training. All my all my bodyguard work was always scenario training. No one going, oh yeah, well you got to walk. You're going to walk someone to the car and the crowd. How are you going to do it? I can't tell you until I walk someone to the crowd and the crowd, and then I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. 
And then when I'm going to get feedback from the person who's teaching me, I'm going, well, that was pretty good, but did you realise you lost your client somewhere around the dog was, or they got a mug, or you, you, know, you got there and you got the you know, you for the car keys for 10 minutes when you're trying to walk in. And there's lots of things you can do. Scenario training is the best way of turning classroom perfection, which is what you train for in, in, in isolation, into something that might actually work. Okay? And that's what we think about. That's the how, the when, and the why when we're doing it. Um, what do we talk about? So, part of the net graph, part of the base, absolute basics I noticed in, in training is that when you're in your stances, your legs are too straight. So, put your feet together. Open your basic stance. Okay? Whether your toes are turned into a classroom training stance, or your feet are more parallel in a natural use, the most important thing is having your knees bent. So, straighten your legs. Lift your toes up. See how easy it is. Lift your toes up. Okay, straighten your legs. What's this for power? One finger in his toe toe. Woo! Bend your knees. Press your knees forward so that what you're actually doing is you're pushing your knees <coughs> to this point. So it's basically forcing your toes down. Bend your knees more. Keep your knees nice and bent, push down. Now lift your toes at the same time. Without straight your legs, you can't do it anymore. You can't lift your toes because your knees are now forced into the floor. So making your circuit grip on the ground longer. And that grip on the ground is where your power comes from. Okay? So straight your legs. And I can move that one finger. Bend your knees. Push into your stance. And suddenly it becomes a lot more powerful because you've got ground resistance. Power doesn't come from sides of muscles. <coughs> power doesn't come from the arms or the pecs or the lats or the quadriceps. Power comes from your ability to grip the ground and deliver force upwards. Okay, so the thing I want you to remember <coughs> from today is every time you train, no matter what you're doing, connect your heel to your elbow. Everything comes from the heels. I don't want to see your heels rising. I don't want to see you turning on the toes. If you want to dance, turn on your toes. You want to do martial arts, turn on the heels. Because <coughs> your first point of contact here to the ground is, your, is that, that circle on the floor. That's where your, your body mass goes down the bone, down the bone, <coughs> From that shoe forward, not, not so important. When you push me, if, if my heels lose the contact, not my toes, I'll sit down. Okay, so push my arm up. Straight leg, <coughs> you do what you like. Just push. Push. And, and, and no matter how much I try, as I try, keep going, you, you do it. I'm going to actually do it. Okay? Where if I'm just doing it? <laughs> <laughs> what I'm doing is I'm connecting whatever point of contact may be. In this case, it's his hand that could be his chin as I punch him, or whatever, whatever part of the body I connect with, however powerful I hit. What I'm mentally doing is I'm taking the force from that point of contact down <coughs> to the floor. And I'm doing this this one leg, so you can see, push harder. Keep pushing solid, keep going, keep going. Push harder. Brilliant, look, push harder. What's this front leg do? It doesn't do anything, does it? It stops me falling over when he stops. It stops when he stops me going that way. It doesn't, doesn't do anything to support me. So this leg is, push again. This leg is, is superfluous, but I can, however, use it. So knowing how <coughs> to take the force down to the ground or bring the force from the ground is what Susan sounds about. So we sit here, and we bring our elbow, and we think about connecting our elbow to our heel, and drive upwards. And drive upwards. And then when we're doing certain time, first thing we should do is drop the elbow to get that angle and push from the elbow to the heel and forward. And notice in the first section the elbow comes in, it's a weird one. You look like a strong chap about you. So, sink your elbow and you punch into me. Sink it like that. So if I'm here, I'm, I'm sorry, you're going to have to come around the side, I apologise. Whenever I stand, I put my back to me and I apologise for that. But what I see, what I see in certain times, a lot of people do this. They come forward across their body and then tarn side comes out like that. And it's a pivotal action that they're practising. Problem is, sink your elbow in more, sink it in, inwards, onto me. Put it into the centre more, brilliant. More at me, that's it. So I get to here, and I meet the resistance, and there's no way that I've got the power to move him. Because I'm trying to go outwards. My muscles are, there's no muscle on the side. So I just sink it in more, that's good. So I'm here, I'm trying to get it out, and there's no way I can get my elbow out. So I don't, I just relax. I relax, turn my elbow in, and I come forward. Push into my arm, and I come forward. And I come forward. And I come forward. And what I'm actually doing is I'm only pushing from the elbow. So instead of trying to fight in with this long lever, at this point, I relax, I slip inside, and now I fight in with that lever. And I 
push it from the floor. And that's what I want to do next. Get a partner. It's not impossible. So what I do is I relax. Bring my elbow through. And as I'm doing it, I'm bringing the elbow in behind. I've now got the biceps and triceps in the direction that they're designed to move. And I, can, I push from my elbow, from a heel. And I'm using just, this hand is now soft. The connection's there. And I just push forward. And I lift up and away. Wouldn't work if I was on my tiptoes. Because I'd move back from the problem. So anchoring yourself to the ground, really important. Which is why Sinim Tower is really important. Because Sinim Tower is not teaching you to stand like a, <coughs> like an idiot. That's just a byproduct of what we do. It's teaching you to sit down. Because as you turn the hip girdle forward and the back straight, and you sit down, it presses your body mass down onto the heels. So lifting the heels should be impossible apart from uprooting your body mass. And at the same time, pressing forward presses the toes down. So you're sinking your whole of your body mass down to the centre of your heels, but keeping your toes pressed to the floor. So you get as much surface grip as possible. You know? If I did exactly the same on a set of roller skates and did that, I'd fly backwards. My muscles haven't changed, but my grip on the ground would have gone. So sitting down and then pushing up. Having your backside out just means that every time there's any pressure, it, 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 it goes back over, this, over here. Wouldn't work. Leaning forward just puts your testicles in the way. That's never good. So, you know, and it, and it puts a lot of strain on the back. So keep the back vertical. Tuck the hips underneath. Tilt the, hel the pelvic girdle here. Press the weight down, and then when I'm training in Sunim Tao, I just relax. And then I can focus about pushing from the heel through the elbows. Okay, so that's the going forward. Then you've got this action. This action is exactly the same. Connect the elbow to the heel. Come on, you. So put, forward, put your arm forward, make it twist, make it tense. Okay, bend it. <coughs> that's it, good. So I'm here. Okay, so don't let me pull you. So if I'm trying to pull in this way, it's really difficult. I see a lot of people do Sunim Tao and they pull in this way. And they pull, you're pulling in this way. But again, the biceps, the triceps are in the wrong action. So I'm doing this, and it's really difficult. So I just tuck my elbow in. I think about, oh yeah, I've got to connect my elbow to my heel. I've got to pull in. I just draw it inwards. And because I'm pulling in and down, and he's locked his muscle groups out, that's what happens. Which is why you don't lock your muscle groups out when you're training. That's why you relax. Don't work. If you're a Ring Chun guy, put your hand like this. Pull my arm down. If I'm relaxed, it's never going to affect it. It's only going to have an effect <coughs> if it's tension, which is why we relax. You know, people have said to me, you know, when somebody's really powerful and uses a lot of energy, how do you how do you do that? I say relax. Give me the most powerful arm up. <laughs> Push towards me hard. Might use energy if there's nothing to push it against. And I'm not, do I worry about it pushing against my energy? No, I'm not. I start going like this, and we're into arm wrestling. The bigger and stronger will win. And it's not a good time to find out that's a blade and I'm trying to use force and he's stronger than me for me then to suddenly go, you know what, I'm going to do something else. I'm much better off not getting into that, that fight in the first place and switching off energies. And now instead of trying to tense the whole arm, <coughs> I just structure my elbow. So in other words, I put the bones in the way. Push on. You can. You can. <laughs> <laughs> you can. <laughs> More weighty bits, that's what you need. Yeah. Okay? But I'm relaxed, look, to the biceps. Nothing engaged because I'm just using the, the fact that the bone is solid. The bone's not going to elongate or stretch or collapse. Hell, if somebody's strong enough to make my bones crumble, I'm kind of in trouble. <laughs> I don't care what martial art I'm going to do. So if you crush bones, you, you kind of dazed on that. So structure is really important. So what I want to do the same thing now. One person put their arm tense, put the bridge on top, and then you just connect the heel to the elbow and you drag in and down. All pulling with the tricep. Arms up, punch the tricep shorten, the arm goes forward. <laughs> Here, triceps contract, pulling the arm down. You're not pulling in with the bicep. If you pull in the bicep, you're letting your opponent get closer. This has got to have forward resistance. So it's a control collapse. So not same fist. So not only am I doing this and connecting the heels to the floor and drawing in, but I'm equally at exactly the same time, he's towards me. Keep pushing. Excellent. I'm also drawing him, keep pushing, drawing him in without collapsing. Because now I can reach him again now. Here I can't reach him. So there's a benefit to allowing the control clap, a bit like an airbag, goes out and greets you and then brings you in and goes, please just do it much. Thank you very much. So it's a control clap. So that pulling with, that connecting the elbow to the heel is about just doing this action. There's still a forwarding action in the two bones here to keep you out. So you're using muscles and skeleton together to achieve a goal. Because if you use your bones and you use your muscles to align the skeleton, I don't care how big and small you are, bones tend to be the same power for everybody. Muscles don't. Okay, and if you if you can use your skeleton and just use the right amount of muscle group to work the skeleton, 
you can be as powerful as anybody else there is. So Wing Chun doesn't try and make you stronger, it tries to make you more efficient, and that's our key. Have a go. How am I doing one thing? How am I doing lots of things? So sticking hands is part of it. Sticking hands is a bridge between the two. Um, because if you think about um, the, the ingredients of, of a threat or a fight, something sparks it. Now, I can't teach you what that is. It can be a look. It can be a, a waving one finger as you drive. It can be lots of things. It can be, it can be somebody just takes a dislike to you. It can be what you're wearing, what you're not wearing, whatever. You, sometimes you're never going to know what sparked the incident. You may not even be aware of it. I've had a situation where somebody tried to glass me and I didn't even know they were there because I didn't know there was a problem. They just come flying at me out of the corner of my eye and I was like, hmm, okay, interesting. And you just, sometimes you just don't know. So that's the first thing. But the one, there are several guarantees. There are not many, but there are several guarantees in a fight scenario that actually work for you. The first thing is they've got to make contact. They've got to come in. So when a punch comes in here, there has to be contact. Contact only comes in two formats. You intercept it. Or you're done. Okay, we're not going to worry about how you block a punch with your teeth, that's an advanced lesson. Um, <laughs> so we work on the fact that we intercept it. If we don't intercept it, it just hurts. That's not Wing Chun, that's just that's not right. So let's not even worry about that. So there has to be something. Um, and I think you were asking about, well, how do you bridge to them? It's not often that I actually want to close the distance to them. You know, if someone wants to hurt me, they tend to come to me because they want to hurt me. Um, I don't tend to walk into their range so they can close me. Um, so the, the chances are they'll be coming into you. Not always. And don't think the Wing Chun never starts a fight. <coughs> because we do. Okay? And a lot of people, a lot of martial arts get really sort of quite uppity about it. Oh, no, I know you. Martial artists never start a fight. And I go like, <laughs> in the street you do. No, no, no. It, it, it's, it's wrong. It's against our ethics. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the technical term I think. <laughs> um, it's against our ethics. Because if you're walking down the street, okay, and... Somebody comes up and starts giving you heaps and, and is actually threatening you and, and, and threatening to bat you in. And you look over their shoulder and you see three, three of his mates running up the road. What, are you going to wait for four of them? Or are you going to bat the first one and try and get a head start on them? Oh. You, know? you can never say never. So a lot of martial arts are like, oh, no, no, we don't start fights. No, no, we never initiate it first. Or like, yeah, you would. You know? What, what, what happens if you are walking down the road with a, um, a partner? Um, walk down the road with a partner, and as you're walking down, somebody steps out in front of you. And they're like, what, what are you doing? What are you doing? What you don't see is two of his mates with you and lady away and starting to rip their clothes off on the floor. All I'm doing is saying, leave it. Don't fucking get involved, don't start. Stay there. If you're looking at my shoulder, your, your partner getting attacked. Are you going to leave it? Yeah. The problem is, if I'm here saying, fucking leave it, and you try and throw a punch, bang, I'm on a hair trigger, aren't I? Yeah. I'm going to chin you, and you are no use knocked out. So you have to have a way of bridging the gap, and getting through me like a hot knife through a to get to them. And there are tools that will do it, so you have to start that fight. But you have to start intelligently and not get battered, because you know they're unconscious. So yeah, I would, just, I would say that's just if I just smack with the piece of 4 too. I have no problem with that. I can, I can get up in the morning and live with myself quite comfortably, if that was the case. Um, there are times and places when everything's appropriate. So you can't have no's. No's equal rules. Rules do not exist in the street. There's, there's no such thing. People, you know, people say to me, oh, well, of course, you can't do a jumpy spinning round pass. So you can, if you're capable. But you wouldn't, because Stupid. Saturday night in the club, you pirouette yourself into non-existence, fall on the floor, and four people trample you. It's not that we don't do roundhouse kicks to the head or any high <coughs> kicks, but why would you lift your leg and dangle your testicles in front of an, an opponent who's got a bottle and they go, oh, <laughs> why, would this, like, why would you want to stand on one leg? Throwing a kick. Why would you want to kick harder than the waist? Doesn't make sense. You know, you can be wearing any type of clothing at all, even his pencil skirt. You can still do that. You can't do that. Okay? You can you can be in any clothing, you can be as flexible or as inflexible as you like to wear your kick. If you can tie your shoelaces, you can kick. Which is not the same for Taekwondo or Muay Thai or and these other arts. And don't get me wrong, I, I admire them. I look at these people who do these 180 spinning kicks, and it's like, wow. I've got a, I've got a female student who does, have you ever heard of Wushu? You know, these really flexible ones, and she's fantastic. And I'm saying, yeah, but you can't do much close to this. And she stood here, at this range, and she can actually pick the leg up and swing her leg up 180 degrees, like that. Bang! And she's going, what if you do that? And she swung her leg up, and grabs her around the neck, so her foot's trapped here, and she stood on one leg with her hand, she's like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it looks great, and I, you know what? I respect everybody do it because I'm not that flexible anymore. I, I really wish I could do the splits. 
Uh, I can do it if I'm not in the trousers. They, they're going to mind me, but the rest of it, you know. Right? Um, I can't do that. So I'm not that flexible anymore. I've lost a lot of flexibility. Um, I wish I could do it. I admire people who can do it. But I, I'd love to be able to do it because I can do it. I'd never use it. Because it's impractical. And I, and from, from the Ring Chan that I learned, and the reason why I got into Ring Chan, is for practicality. So we need to keep it practical. So what you need to do is you need to think of what, inventive ways of training yourself. So bridging the gap between the street and the classroom is a difficult one. Okay, um, we talked about putting people in the circle. Now, I mean, ten people like the like Yeet Man film. Ten people in the circle, one <laughs> in the middle. The problem is, it starts becoming either very, very scrappy, very quickly, or if it was a, a real situation, you'd be on the bottom of a scrub and yeah. ten people. Oh. <laughs> nobody's going to. They're not going to take it in turns, and you can't fight ten on one because they're just going to kick the lumps out of you. You should never try and take on a crowd like that. You're going to hurt. Okay, you may be forced to, but there's no technique or solution I can ever teach you that's going to work. Okay? Um, but what you can do is you can start to train, sort of like Frank Borra, you three. Okay? And what you do is you get three people you want to work with, and you ask them to take it in terms of attacking. Not because that's how a fight is, but because of the risk. So when you come with a punch here, bang, I'm here, okay? what I need him to do, having done my simple technique, is dissolve and disappear. So the next one could come in. And then he comes in, bang, and he dissolves, and then bang, and he dissolves. And the reason why I get them to move out and move in is not, not real. But the problem is, when that punch comes in here <coughs> to here, okay, and this is a conversation we've just had a minute ago, is that a lot of people then throw that next punch, and then you've got to deal with something at close quarter. But that's not real. It's not that he wants to throw two punches, because he will. Of course he would, he'll throw two, but I'm not hitting him. So for your teeth, that's where you would be by the time you throw your second punch. You wouldn't be here. Bang. You'd be there. Because I'm going to be a great second punch. <laughs> oh, by the way, that's it. Okay, so you come in the punch. So, red throw second punch. Bang. Oh, no, you're still. Where are you? Where have you gone? Okay, you've had children. <laughs> oh, what? What a second one. <laughs> and people forget the fact that when, in reality, I am going to hit you. When I hit you, you don't just stand there and absorb it. If you do, I'm probably going to get run out like a wet cloth. Okay? So when you come in here, and I go BAM, I basically bust your knee joint. So is he going to throw that second punch? No. Good luck. No, you know? And you throw a punch. I'm here. And then let's say Kev comes in. I'm going to do that. I'm going to BAM. I'm going to be using one against the other. You know? And you're going to regret having a beer. So I'm going to use everything like might be but I'm going to use one against the other. I'm going to use human shield. I'm going to use anything I can to protect myself, because that's what self-protection is. Okay? And Ring Chun is not a pretty thing. You're not learning it like this, so in a fight it looks like this. You're learning it so that I, so when something comes in, I get, I get my centre line covered with whatever I use. And there's the hit. When it comes in again, boom, I'm going to be coming in close. And I'm going to be headbutting, I'm going to be gouging, I'm going to be stamping. You know, I'm going to be kicking, I'm going to be stamping. <laughs> I'm going to do whatever I have to do to get myself out of the situation ASPP. And it ain't going to be pretty, it's going to be nice, but I'm going to attack the centre line, I'm going to protect the centre line, I'm going to drive up the centre line, I'm going to use very simple footwork. Best block in the world is move, so I'm going to be here. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> when he comes flying in, boom, I'm going to use his momentum against him and let him run onto my fist. I'm quite lazy. I'm going to let him run and headbutt my fist. I'm alright with that. If he's still travelling, that's great. If he comes in, and my, my philosophy is this. When they come in, hit them. When they're there, hit them. When you run away, hit them. <laughs> you know? Or stop them running away like that. So then I can break things. And then when I run away, my first step goes to the floor and I run away laughing. And it's fucked up in that. Never to be used again. So rings are not pretty, it's not nice. <laughs> it's not a style. In my book, it's not a style. It's a Swiss Army knife of techniques that you need to understand. You do it in drills, you do it in forms because you do it at home. You do it at drills and you do it with a partner or in front of a mirror. You do it in chi style where you're learning the what happens next. So the, the breakdown of the fight is that something sparks it, then there's a first port of contact. I either intercept it or I don't. If I don't, conversation over. So let's assume I do. Ideally, I don't just intercept it, I intercept it with, with a counter straight away to give them something else to think about rather than myself. Okay? But then at some point, they're going to throw that next technique. When I throw that next technique, I need to react. The problem is, if I'm at this range and he throws a really powerful punch, I'm going to have to react fast and I'll probably hurt him. 
If he throws a powerful punch and I try not to react, I probably won't stop it fast enough, and I'll get hurt. Either way, one of us gets injured, and that's not what we come here for. We're not coming here for, you know, accidents happen, but we're not coming here to get injured, we're coming here to avoid it. So getting hurt, learning how to not get hurt, doesn't work in my book. So I need a safe way of the what ifs. What if he hooks, what if he jabs, what if he crosses, what if he does? Okay, let's start off here then. Just from here, do what I like. And then it's the what ifs. And what I'm learning to do is work not about what I think might happen, but I have to react to what he does. <laughs> you know? So that's what, that's what sticking hands is all about. And then we do it without... What's my fault? And then you're going to take your eyes out of the equation. And that's why I like going outside. <laughs> when I say trying outside, I mean on a Sunday afternoon, I'm eating ice. It's not for Christmas, you can't get Here we go. So then what we do is we, we play... We put a face bra on. <laughs> we find the, find the hands here. And then I can't see what he's going to do. So now I have to just feel and react. By sticking and controlling, as much as I can, I know exactly where he is. And that's why we do sticking hands. So that's like we trying to arm lock you or wrist lock you or grapple you or... Yeah. It becomes a game. It's a game of not using my eyes. Very tentative, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> I can't see you, you can see me, what's the matter with you? So again, it's, it's, it's not a fight, it's a game. Where is he? How, what is he doing? You know, he could very easily stop. Put the blindfold off a sec. Three sounds not about winning. Okay? Because he can't see you. It's easy to cheat. <laughs> so every time he comes forward, you're exposed. You want to go defensive now. Ready? That's not defensive. Every time you let go, I'm going to hit you. You let go. Yes. But you're coming out to the unknown. Don't come to the unknown. Be defensive. Let me show you. Relax. I would say when you blindfold, you defend or counter attack. You don't attack. If I'm here, and I go like this. Did you get your hand? How do I know what, what the other hand's doing now? So defensively, I want to learn to stick, or if I can get an angle and use his body, I will. Relaxation, it shouldn't be aggressive. 
okay? It should just be a learning experience. It's a bit like watching one of these nature programs where you see the little tiger cubs or the lion cubs rolling around on the grass, biting each other's tails and biting their neck and pounding each other. They're not killing each other, otherwise the population will be a lot less than it is. But they're doing all the fighting <coughs> without their claws. And that's what we need to learn to do, and to fight without our claws. Because there's a time and a place for travel maliciously and aggressively without that inch. And fashion is not it. Doing the thing with three people, the reason why we, I mean, the reason why we get them to disappear is because he wouldn't still be stood there. Okay, not impossible. I, mean, I might hit him, and he might be. So you know, that, that make your day sad. But, but you, you want you want the fact that more people are coming in. We're not trying to train against three people. It's just two, it's one person coming from three different angles. Okay, and sometimes yeah, I'll, I'll learn how to use you know shields and mechanics and all these sort of little pretty things and making sure they can't get away and. Get your ponytail out of the pool. <laughs> <laughs> okay? Um, and then what you do is you go outside and do the little walking <coughs> alley. You set up scenarios. You can take two chairs, sit them outside, and then they're getting out of the car. You can, you can have that door going out leaving a restaurant, or leaving a club, or leaving your house, or walking up to your house to put your heels in order to be grabbed from behind. Create these situations and work with them. And find out what the answers are. Don't make it turn into a fight. If, you, if you're training now, you, you walk up there, I'm going to tell them put the key in the door, swing across your mind, you go, bang! Not the windpipe we did the Thursday. <laughs> it's a training exercise. The, the, the people aren't going to grab you if you're overly aggressive in your response. The only time I come and grab you like this, it's a training exercise, I end up with a smack in the throat and a punch in the nose. Very quickly, I'm going like that. I don't think so, I'm not coming in for that. But if, the, if you're doing the mechanics of it, then I can learn from that. Because, do it again. Me being here, push. Me being here teaches me the vulnerability that I will create on somebody if I do it right. So it's good that I'm here. Okay? Do it again. It's not good for you because I'm going to bite because I'm fully sticking out here. Okay? And I would. You know, you'll see sometimes when I'm doing a punch, I'll come in here, I'll get them in here, and I'll, I'll just whisper them over the back of here. Because I would. Because you, you let me do that and I'll smash your face in with the nose. And I'll do all of that thing. See what my knee is? What's this? Now I'm going to lift my knee. Oh. <laughs> I'm just going to pick on the last one while I remember the Hoon Ma. When the two guys did Hoon Ma, the reason why it wasn't as successful as it could be is that your foot was back here and you were trying to do it there. Okay? You need to have your foot parallel, just like in VG. Because what we don't want to be doing is a sweep. Because it looks great. Right point this person coming to you. <coughs> and you end up headbutting the floor because they just pulled you down with them. Or I do it with somebody your size and then you just fall on them. We don't want to be grappling and sweeping. We don't want to go for power moves. So who in my application, you have your foot here, so when it comes in behind, it just destroys his posture. If you're in a bad position, you can't hit them powerfully. If you're in a good position, you can. So take a strong stance. So if he's here, he could fire off that punch very powerfully. Yeah? If I could put him somewhere like about, can you put him more? Put your hands like that. Go like that. <laughs> <laughs> if I could put him there, that's not a good position for him. It's not a great, it's a good for me. Okay, so when he comes with this punch and he's nice and powerful, and I go, there he goes. Straight away down. Yeah. That's what Gunmar does. Gunmar comes in. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> breaks his stance. Does it? Do it again. I'll do it with the hand. I know you quite like it. <coughs> so I'm stepping in here. All I'm doing is put my foot, notice it's underneath his leg. So the line between my hip and my heel is obliterated by his leg. So if I straighten my leg, uh, it's not sweet, I've got full grip purchase on the ground, and so I just throw away. But it destroys his posture, but it's not as much as we hold his nose, <laughs> or his throat, or his eye. And then you do it, but they go like that. You know, if you're pissed about your mate, you walk up behind him, put the knee behind him, and you drop. It's kind of long, that's what you do to them. You're holding these bits. Okay? Um, so, who knows is, is, is about breaking stance, it's not about throws and stuff like that. Again, Saturday night, you come in. You do a throw, if it was me, if I was being jumped to the floor, I would grab anything I can and take it to the floor with them. I'd hold them on, so when I landed, I'm going to bite bits I find. <coughs> yeah? I'm going to be, be moving retina out of my fingernails for about a month. Because that's, to me, that's what fighting is. Fighting not nice. So I don't want to put, I don't want to do something that's going to cause me a problem. Okay? Simple as that. Questions? Not really. really. <laughs> I can do it. I'm older than all of you. I'm certainly more injured than all of you, and I'm not as fit as all of you, if I can do it anyway. That's the thing you've got to remember in your head. It's just, it's just, just technique. It's just learning. <laughs>
Get it right, move on, get it right, move on. Before you know it, you're doing it. Questions?